I don't think a lot of people understand how much effort is put in to catching these big brown trout. The hours and hours put in staring at a computer screen, studying the maps. The obsession over every little detail of your fishing setup, the weather patterns, the water levels, the miles and miles and miles of creek fished. All for that one moment when that brown you have been searching for shows itself. Bye. Jesus. Welcome to Hardman Fishing Adventure Streamer Episode 5. The biggest brown of the year. Maybe, assuming I can catch fish. It is, the weather's pretty good right now. A little bit sun out and everything, partly cloudy, but there's supposed to be some thunderstorms move through. So that should get the brown trout fired up. So we'll see how it goes. Hope you guys enjoy. <clears throat> Missed it completely. Got him. Didn't miss him that time, boys. Didn't miss him that time. Did not miss him that time, boys. Come on up here. Come on up here, fella. Oh, oh, chill out, buddy. Oh, he came off. Perfect. Perfect. Recording? There we are. This is no giant, but you can't have the big fish without the little fish. Just a little lesson real quick for anybody who's not like super into fishing or doesn't know a whole lot about it or something. So when you're catching releasing like a trout, you want your hands to be wet because they have a slime coating and that slime coating, you don't want to rub off the slime coating because they need that to survive. That's a fat, healthy brown. Second thing is, you really need a rubber coated net because that is another thing, it's just slime coating. You want them to have the slime coating as, you want the fish to be as untouched as possible when you release them back. Uh, so anyway, keep under the water almost completely unless you want to take some pictures, in which case then you can take them out of the water, all that fun stuff, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, this fish is ready to go. He's gonna swim off just fine. So there you go. So. If you catch and release fish correctly, they will survive, and then that is how you get big fish. Bye. Jesus. God bless. I hope you guys saw that. Desperately hope you guys saw that. It's a bigger fish too. He's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Woo. Come on, don't do that. Ooh. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Holy freaking monkeys. That's a big fish too. Big old boy. Oh, I hope you guys saw that fish come out like that. Holy freaking moly. I'm actually gonna back up a little bit. Oh. Oh, Jesus. We'll chill out. Oh, that's a thing. It's a big fish. It's a very big fish. Look at that scar on him. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you? Yeah, this scar right here. Something tried to get him. All right, guys. So, 21. 
21 inches. <laughs> yeah. fish up a little bit so the world can see its beauty. Look at that. Beautiful little brownie. Can't argue with that, that's for sure. Just gorgeous fish all the way up and down. Big old boy too. Woo! Right in there, buddy! Alright, I'm gonna get this fish on hook, which he just did himself. Right there. Now let go of the line. Let go of the let go. Thanks, buddy. Man, that's a gorgeous fish, man. That is a beautiful fish. All right, guys, just wanted to give a quick lesson. First of all, the butt monkey strikes again. When I, two things. First of all, in clear water, you wanna use more natural colors or lighter colors. When the water is muddy, you use dark water, dark colors. Um, sorry, there's some really strange people looking at me on the bridge. I'm actually somewhat concerned. All right, <clears throat> anyway guys, so butt monkey, a little lesson here. Second thing, the water's a lot clearer. So I thought about how I fished last time and basically the biggest thing I've done different is I've made this mono, or not mono, geez whiz, fluorocarbon leader, I lengthened it. So last time I probably had it, or what I normally have it for muddy waters, probably, I don't know, one to two feet. I lengthened it, it started off at almost four feet probably, three or four feet, because I knew the clear water, the fish would spook from seeing my fly line. It was basically the gist of it. Second lesson I wanna give. This right here where I caught that fish is right in front of this rock where my lure's balancing right now. And in front of that rock, it is called a pillow. So a pillow is a basically piece of slack water where the water kind of wells up. It's like almost like a, um, oh, it, Basically, if you can see, if I put my lure right here, it just pauses and kind of swirls in circles. Brown trout love, well, just trout in general, brown trout love that because that is a place they can sit um, and any bait fish, bugs, minnows, whatever they might want to eat, if it comes through there, it'll get stuck in that little current for a split second. And those brown trout just engulf it like you just saw. So that's another little lesson. Look for rock pillows, cast every piece of cover you can see. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can't catch another fish, a bigger one maybe, we'll see. We will see. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's beginning to rain. Beginning to rain. It's not a bad thing. Yes. Got it. Good. It's a big one. Big fish, big giant fish. Monster fish. Big boy. Nope, you're not allowed to go up there. Come on, not allowed to go up there, come on. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Holy guacamole. Yep, I see you too. Net, net, Got on the bank real quick. Come on, dude. Stay pinned. Stay pinned, buddy. Holy, look how big that fish is, guys. I don't think he's done. He might be, I have no idea. Jesus. I don't know what to do. I can't. Yes, yes. Yes! Holy job! Mm. Oh! Oh my! I do not deserve this fish. I I choked and I somehow I choked and I landed it. I choked and I landed it. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that when I'm editing this, just do the replay real quick. When that fish hit, it came up and I saw it flash on it. And I got excited. And this line is super wet. And when it hit, it literally slipped through my fingers. And all I could do is just run backwards. That's a monster fish. It's huge. And he's off. Or he broke my lure. 
What are, which one was it, buddy? You're off. Stop it, buddy. I'm gonna let you go, dude. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you chill out, chill out. Yes, I know you're healthy. If you just relax for a minute, everything's gonna be fine. Holy guacamole, it's a stinking monster. <laughs> I don't know how long this fish is. I can't wait to measure him. Um, so basically, it's been raining, lightning, thundering, as I'm sure I'll put in the audio clips. But uh, pass it up, find these, what, this big log jam, jerked a couple times, and I just saw a flash of what I thought was a nice fish. I didn't think it was as big as this one is. It was a nice fish. I believe this is my biggest. He came in at 25 and a half, which caught one before it was 25 or so, but this fish is just so girthy, like weight-wise. He's gotta be, he's gotta be one of my biggest, if not my biggest, so I'm just gonna call him my biggest. I'm gonna try to be as nice with him as possible. Hopefully he's not a brat to me. Look at that thing. It's just a massive, massive brown trout. Look how fat it is. Gorgeous fish, man. Just big, fat, just, I mean, he's got to weigh five or six pounds, probably. I'm sure she, probably. Actually, she. Don't want all the haters to get mad at me. Well, guys, honestly, and this is 100% serious, I could care less if I catch another fish the rest of the day. Streamer fishing is not a game of um, numbers. Basically, when you got streamer fishing, you're like, man, you know, I'd be happy if I catch one or two fish because those one or two fish are probably gonna be huge. Like that one, that was probably my biggest. It was 25 and a half to 26 to 25. It was like hovering in that range. It was really hard to tell because she wouldn't quit moving. And quite honestly, I didn't want to hold her there forever until she did. So I just set it up and set the, you know, the little GoPro up and stuff and made sure got some shots of it as, we re as I released it. Just watched this one way into the hole, went right back into the log jam that she came out of, and couldn't be happier. It's an absolute massive brown trout, just a fat, healthy, not a scar on it. Just, man, I mean, just th seeing things like that just shows you how healthy a creek is and just, you know, gives you hope for the future. Anyway, I guess I'll keep trying to catch some more fish. It's only, it's probably three or four o'clock by now, I have no idea, but. The water is kind of getting a little bit more off colored because of all that rain I got like, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. So, yeah, we might be able to catch another one. I have no idea. Let's see. Just wanted to show you guys, just to give an idea of the power behind these brown trout. First of all, I want to show you this. I don't know if you can see it. I'm not sure if it'll focus. There's a white welt on my hand right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I really hope you can. But um, that is from the first brown trout that I hooked. When it turned, it pulled the uh, fly line through my hand so quickly that it literally burned me. Like it hurts. I had to sit it in the water for a little bit. I didn't film that. And then second thing is, I'll show you this streamer right here. Now granted, I landed the fish before this happened, but it twisted in the net. And this is wire right here. Oh, sorry, I'm not even on the, <laughs> okay guys. So it twisted in the net. This is wire, legitimately wire that it snapped in two that went around this hook when it twisted in that net. Just the amount of force behind like a five or six, seven, however many pound brown that was, is just unbelievable. So first of all, butt monkey for the win. Second of all, it's broken. So that's kind of a sad moment in time. Just having a moment of silence for the, moment of silence for the butt monkey. Okay, I'm glad we did that. Now I'll cut this off and tie on another one. All right guys, so that little thunderstorm there, it got the best of the creek. The water is literally chocolate milk right now. Just not even an inch of visibility and although a little bit of off-color tint isn't bad for browns there's a limit to everything and it's just not worth it right now so i'm calling it a day and um, i'd love to give a shout out to catch cam nets i've just used their net today and so far so good it's a very heavy duty net it's very big obviously it could hold the 25 and a half inch brown trout and yeah has a little brown trout on the handle, looks sick. So go check them out and I'll catch you guys on another episode of Hardman Fishing Adventures.
Scotty. No!